Alright, so your second lesson this week has to do with um, some more trends. Um, you should have already looked at um, size trends and size versus ion. So the next thing we're going to look at is ionization energy. So you probably want to put this in notes or something like that, uh, but ionization energy. And we learned about ions last week. So ions um, are when things lose um, electrons or gain electrons, they become an ion, so they start as an atom. So ionization energy is the energy required to remove the outermost electron from an atom. That's what we have on the screen. So again, ionization energy is the energy required to remove the outermost electron from an atom. So if we, we are removing electrons, we are making cations, all right? We're making positive ions. Um, there's another thing um, that's called electron affinity. Uh, you might see it in AP Chem, um, College Chem. We're not going to talk about it, but it's the energy that gets released um, if atoms gain electrons. Uh, but it's it's a weird, there's not much, there's not really a trend that goes with it uh, because certain things want um, electrons, other things don't. So sometimes your um, values are negative, which is weird. So anyways, ionization energy. So it's always will require energy to remove an electron. Okay? How come? Because you have your nucleus that's in the middle, you have this electron that's outside, there's an attraction between them, so it takes energy to grab that electron and take it off. If you remember our last unit before spring break, um, we looked at um, the Bohr model. So um, we could excite electrons to higher energy levels, they wouldn't stay there, they'd get excited when they fell back down, they would release energy. So the same thing, we can excite them to higher energy levels or we can remove them completely, but in both instances it requires energy. All right. So um, we might have something that looks like this equation-wise. Um, M, just some metal, really doesn't matter, um, becomes M plus, plus an electron. So that's what ionization energy, how we might symbolize it in an equation. I would, you don't need that for notes though. Um, so here's our two trends. Tends to decrease down a column and tends to increase across a row. So what you need to know is this is exactly opposite to size. Okay? So again, ionization energy is exactly opposite to size. So it makes sense if we're going down a column. So again, if you think in terms of Bohr model, you have this nucleus in the middle, and then we kind of have rings. Okay, so Bohr is wrong, but it helps to explain things much easier. All right, so we know there's really electron clouds, but just think of rings getting further and further away. So if we have an electron on this ring, as opposed to an electron on this ring, which one's more strongly attracted to the nucleus? It's going to be this one, not this one. All right, so it's going to take less energy to remove that. So if you can imagine, you'll have to imagine quite a bit. If I'm francium, so I'm a huge atom. All right, and here's my furthest most electron. I'm not sure what you can see from there. Oh, maybe I'll speak back a little bit more. Um, so if we we're in class, I would say, "Hey, somebody, come grab this marker from me," and I kind of just lounge around, like moving real slowly, and um, I just say, "Hey, take it, take it." And what happened? I dropped it because it's so far from me. It's hardly, it's hardly attracted at all. So francium has a ridiculously low ionization energy. Okay? How come? Because its outermost electron is a long way in terms of atoms from the nucleus, so it doesn't take much energy to break that attraction. However, if I had something um, like helium, the opposite corner, it's a really small atom. So in that first row, it only has a 1s orbital. It's got two electrons. So instead of holding it way out here, I'm holding it to my chest. And now I'm like, hey, come grab this marker from me. And it's going to be a lot harder. How come? Because these electrons are much closer to the nucleus. So it takes more energy to break that attraction. So that's why they are opposite each other. OK? Um, yes, that's pretty much that's it for ionization energy. Um, know what it is, energy required to move an, el an electron. And um, the other thing you need to know is it's opposite of size. So what I would do um, for these type problems, um, no size, no size, no size, K-N-O-W size. And if you get a um, question asking you about ionization energy, just answer oppositely. All right. Um, it'd be easier if we were in class together. Um, but instead of memorizing two trends, just memorize one. No size, no size, no size, and ionization energy is exactly opposite. Okay, one other thing, and um, it's simply going to be this. Let me pull up. Here we go. 
All right. So on the backs of the periodic tables you got from the, from, at the beginning of the year, um, periodic tables that are on our tables. Um, you can actually access this um, periodic table on Moodle as well. Um, so it's just that should look familiar. All right. On the back, we did solubility rules last fall. And then we have another um, trend, which is called the electronegativity scale. So kind of if you peruse this, um, you'll notice there's a group of elements missing. Um, actually, you probably want to put it like a definition first. So electronegativity is the ability of one atom to attract electrons to itself. Okay, so it's not measuring energy. It's, it's kind of weird. It's a number that we use in chemistry that's not measurable. All right. So again, it's defined as the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. Okay, and the higher the number, the more likely they are to be attracted to that thing. And the lower the number, things like I don't want electrons, I'm good. So kind of as you look at the scale, um, there are no noble gases. Why are there no noble gases? Because noble gases don't want electrons. So they, there's no there's no good reason for them to gain an electron. So their electronegativity is just classified as zero. All right. But notice, fluorine is top um, top right. It has the largest. And if we had francium on here, it's not there. Um, it would be below cesium. It would be the smallest. So know the electronegativity scale exactly matches ionization energy. I don't know why it does that. Um, exactly matches ionization energy. Or it's exactly opposite size again. So again, electronegativity is the same as ionization energy, and it's opposite size. Um, but we're going to use these values next unit, all right? Possibly even next week. Um, they become important for um, bonding. So um, a couple quick, just interesting tidbits. Um, Linus Pauling, this is his electronegativity scale. He's the guy that came up with this. He's probably one of the uh, like premier American-born scientist. Um, he actually won two Nobel Prizes, one for developing this electronegativity scale. So again, it's kind of funny because he just made up these numbers. Again, they're not measurable, but it's a combination of ionization energy, it's a combination of um, size, and it's a combination of electron affinity, which is the thing you don't have to worry about. So he took those three things, kind of mashed them together, came out with an equation, and came out with values. And um, you'll see how we use the values next week. Um, so that was his first Nobel Prize, and his second Nobel Prize, huh, usually I know it off the top of my head, and this, right now, I can't think of it, which is fine. Um, electron negativities, oh, and um, hybridizations, so we won't get there in, in like an honors chem, first year chemistry class in high school, but he also came up with the idea of hybridized orbitals, um, which is going to lead into the shapes, again, you see next unit. All right, so that is it for um, trends, ionization energy, electronegativity. Uh, you're going to have a quick video over what that looks like in terms of reactivity coming up.